Hello everyone and welcome to A Little Bush. Let's take a new question. PTT, partial thromboplastin time, accounts for all of the following clotting factors except 7, 11, 9, or 12. As we can see from this question, it's asking about the coagulation factors, which takes part in the process known as the coagulation cascade. And usually, when medical students are first presented to this topic, well, they see something like this. And in fact, this is not even the real problem. I know it's complex, but if you give it some time, eventually, you will learn it. The real problem is, the moment you finish studying this complex pathway, you give it a few days and psh, it's gone. With that being said, the goals of this video will be 1. To make the coagulation pathway super easy and unforgettable. 2. To address the clinical correlation between this pathway and different drugs and diseases. This clinical correlation which are heavily tested in many licensing exams. At the beginning, let us give some general notes. First, this coagulation cascade is a multiple step process in which the blood is transformed from liquid to gel. So basically, if you are injured and there is a wound cut or something, this cascade will be commenced, effectively sealing the breaks in the blood vessels and eventually the bleeding can stop. Second, it's a family of 12 coagulation factors, numbered from 1 to 13, most of which are plasma proteins produced by the liver. It's 12 coagulation factors from 1 to 13 because there is no number 6. And most of them are produced by the liver, so if there is any problem in the liver, we will have abnormalities in this cascade. Now, let's start with the steps of the coagulation pathway. We have generally an intrinsic and an extrinsic pathway. Intrinsic is initiated by something from inside the body, while the extrinsic is initiated by something external to the body. I want you to think that the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways both want to score the perfect 10. Here, let's start with factor 10 in the middle. We will be adding the factors one by one until we complete the entire diagram. So, we know there are 12 coagulation factors. We will follow a descending order in the numbering of the factors. Factor number 12 will start the intrinsic pathway. After factor 12, we will have factor 11. After 11, we should have factor 10 but our perfect 10 is preserved for the common pathway. So we will skip it and have 9. After 9 in the descending order, we will have 8. After 8, we will have 7, but factor 7 will be in the extrinsic pathway. The initiator of the intrinsic pathway is subendothelial collagen. And the initiator of the extrinsic pathway is tissue factor. To memorize it, just remember the subendothelial collagen, the longer name, is associated with the longer pathway, and tissue factor, the shorter name, is associated with the shorter pathway. So for the intrinsic pathway, subendothelial collagen will activate factor number 12, which will activate factor 11, then we will have factor 9 and 8, reaching to the perfect 10, factor number 10. On the other hand, in the extrinsic pathway, tissue factor will activate factor number 7 and factor 7 will activate the perfect 10. Now the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways score the perfect 10, aka the factor number 10 is activated. From there, we now can start the journey of the common pathway. Factor number 10 will activate factor number 5 and factor number 5 will go to activate factor number 2 
which is called thrombin. Factor number two will activate factor number one, which is called fibrin. Factor number two also will activate factor 13. In the common pathway, we now have factors 10, 5, 2, and 1. This also can have an easier way to be remembered. We can just go in the opposite direction and multiply the numbers 1, 2, and 5, which will equal 10, if you need a way to memorize it. After that, fibrin along with calcium and factor number 13 will form fibrin meshwork and stabilize the plaque. Now let's switch for a minute to our notes box. For all of these coagulation factors, we only need to know the numbers, and that's enough. But there are two factors that we should be familiar with their names. Thrombin, which is activated factor 2, and fibrin, which is activated factor 1. And we have an easy way for you to memorize them. The T in thrombin with T in 2. And the F in fibrin with the F in first. Alright, let's move on and see what are the other things that can affect this cascade. We have something called plasminogen. It can be converted to plasmin and plasmin can work on the fibrin mesh to degrade it and destroy the form thrombus. As a product of the degradation, we will have D-dimer, which is used for the screening of many diseases. Plasminogen is converted to plasmin by the enzyme TBA, tissue plasminogen activator. This is a very important enzyme because whenever we convert plasminogen to plasmin, we destroy the thrombus and this can be used for the management of many diseases like ischemic stroke, etc. We have many drugs that can work on TBA. We have thrombolytics, which can activate TBA, and we have antifibrinolytics, which can stop and inhibit TBA. Now let's add some key colors to this cascade. We have the common pathway, we have the extrinsic pathway and we have the intrinsic pathway. To add more clinical value, it's important to talk about the other regulators in this cascade. We have regulatory anticoagulant proteins, protein C and S, which are produced by the liver. They inactivate factors 5 and 8. Also, we have von Willebrand factor, which carries and stabilizes factor 8. So if we say there is a disease that will lower protein C or S, will increase factor 5 and 8, and as a result we will have more thrombus formation. On the other hand, if we have a disease or something that will cause low von Willebrand factor, we will have low factor 8, and that will increase the chances of bleeding. Okay, but how can we remember this? Don't worry, we've got your back. We have a small mnemonic for it. Protein C cancels and protein S stops the coagulation because they both inactivate factor 8 and 5, thus stopping the coagulation process. Von Willebrand factor is the protector of factor 8 and as we can see, the name of von Willebrand factor is similar enough to factor 8. V and W for number 8 and F for factor. And let's add this to our diagram. Proteins C and S regulate factor 5. Proteins C and S along with von Willebrand factor regulate factor 8. There is another concept which is hemophilia versus hemostasis. So let's explain these terms. Hem means blood. Philia means to love, so it means to stay in the blood state. On the other hand, we have heme means blood and stasis means stop. So hemostasis means stopping, uh, stopping the blood, which will form coagulation. These are two similar but completely different terms.
So we have different hemophilic diseases. In these diseases, the main pathology is deficiency of just one coagulation factor. Hemophilia A is a deficiency of factor 8. Hemophilia B is a deficiency of factor 9. And hemophilia C, deficiency of factor 11. Just think about it. Deficiency of coagulation factor. So we will have less coagulation factor that will slow or stop the coagulation process. So the blood will tend to stay in the liquid form. And as a hallmark of this disease, patients will tend to bleed more than the others. But how can we correlate which hemophilia is associated with which factor? Just notice the pronunciation of A is similar to the pronunciation of 8. So hemophilia A is associated with factor 8. Then we, we move on with the letters and numbers. Hemophilia B is associated with factor 9 and hemophilia C is associated with factor 11. We just skipped factor 10 like we did in the intrinsic pathway. So let's add it to our diagram. Factor 11 is associated with hemophilia C. Factor 9 is associated with hemophilia B. And factor 8 is associated with hemophilia A. Now let's add another key color to our diagram, namely other drugs. We have drugs that work directly on factor 10. Direct factor 10 inhibitors like abexiban, and we have Fondaberinox, which is also inhibits factor 10. Other anticoagulants we want to mention affect factor 2, thrombin. This group of drugs is called direct thrombin inhibitors. And an example for it is dabigatran. You have done a wonderful job so far. Before discussing the last two drugs, let's discuss some important tests related to the coagulation cascade. We have PT, prothrombin time, which tests the function of common and extrinsic pathways. And we have PTT, partial thromboplastin time, which tests function of common and intrinsic pathways. So both tests the common pathway, but it's important to keep in mind that PT is for the extrinsic and PTT is for the intrinsic. And we have another mnemonic to, mar to remind you of that. When I think about these two tests, I just think about tennis and table tennis. Table tennis has two T's and this game should be played inside a building. So PTT is for the intrinsic pathway. Tennis with one T, this game usually needs larger fields. So it's played outside buildings. So PT is for the extrinsic pathway. But please don't forget that both tests assist the common pathway. Now let's finish our video by explaining two very important drugs, warfarin and heparin. So let's give a key color for warfarin. Warfarin affects vitamin K dependent coagulation factors. So it will affect factor nine, factor seven, factor 10, and factor two. Another color for heparin, it will act on antithrombin inhibitors and eventually it will affect the coagulation factors 12, 11, 10, 9, and also 2. Now we have finished drawing our diagram. You can give yourself a pat on the back. You deserve it. As you do so, I want you to give it a look. Try to notice what is the difference between warfarin and heparin. What are the factors affecting them? Both of these drugs, heparin and warfarin, are affecting factors 2 and 10, like the other drugs which affect factors 2 and 10. Heparin is affecting most, if not all, the intrinsic pathway. Factor 12, 11, 9, and it's not affecting factor 8, maybe because factor 
it is protected by von Willebrand factor? Who knows? However, warfarin is mostly concerned with the extrinsic pathway. It's affecting all the extrinsic pathway. Yeah, the one and only. Factor 7. There is a slight effect on the intrinsic pathway though, but the major one is related to the extrinsic. So I want you to create this concept because it's very helpful. That usually the, the intrinsic pathway is related to heparin and the extrinsic pathway is related to warfarin. And when I think about it, I think of warfarin as if there is a war and the war is outside. So it's external. For heparin, I think to get out of the war, stay happy inside your house. So heparin with the intrinsic pathway, warfarin with the extrinsic pathway. Now this is the final slide and I cannot emphasize enough how important it is. It's a summary for the mnemonics that we discussed in the last two slides. Heparin is monitored by PTT, which reflects the intrinsic pathway. Warfarin is monitored by PT, which reflects the extrinsic pathway. And I've brought the pictures to, to remind you with the previous mnemonics. Lastly, let's solve the question that we have presented in the beginning of this video. PTT, partial thromboplastin time, accounts for all of the following clotting factors except A, 7, B, 11, C, 9, and D, 12. So as we have learned, when we think about PTT, we think about table tennis, and table tennis is played inside a building, so it's related to the intrinsic pathway. And both tests are used for the common pathway. Now for the question, it's asking what are the factors that are not assessed by PTT? In the answers, we know factor 7 is part of the extrinsic pathway, so that can be a correct answer. For the others, factor 11 is an intrinsic, factor 9 is intrinsic, factor 12 is also part of the intrinsic pathway. So the correct answer is A, factor 7. This is the end of our video. I want to thank you guys for watching. And if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can share it with your friends so you can give them a little push of your own. Stay safe and see you in the next video.